Watching Own Your Wellness, and I'm excited to be here today. Before we get started, I gotta call myself out. I guess I um, I have like this pre-show ritual where I use my um, what's it called, Adore Therapy Communication Chakra Boost. So you put it on like your hands or whatnot, and then you smell it. So my guests might have been sitting in the background watching me sniff my hands. <laughs> I do that and I also hold on to a particular crystal while we're filming and it's funny to me because I can't find it and I feel slightly ajar and askew from the experience but then I realize I'm sure my cat has been playing with it because he loves to play with things that are not his crazy cat that and the other day he literally I hand to God ran up the wall I saw him do it I wouldn't have believed it but I actually saw him parkour run up the wall and bounce off it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen but anyway, enough about my cat, enough about communication. I am excited to bring our guest on today. She is an amazing health and wellness expert, somebody that I had the honor and privilege of meeting recently through a mutual friend, and I'm so glad that we got introduced. So let me bring her to the stage. Teresa Wells, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me today. So excited that we get to have this conversation. You know, when we were talking privately, I, um, and I think I actually said this, I said something like, you're my people. And it was so true because just the way that you approach this whole idea of health and wellness is absolutely phenomenal. So I would love for you to share a little bit about yourself and your wellness journey. Oh, wow. Well, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> It was some time ago, some years ago, where, you know, I was going through the struggles like everyone else, uh, not eating right or enough. That was my not eating right, was not eating enough and going through the day with maybe only eating once or twice. I went from being extremely physically active in high school and college and then later entering after college into adult life and falling off of intentional activity with exercise and whatnot. And I ended up just becoming um, obese. I was well over 200 pounds. And the thing, you know, people say they don't know how you got there. You don't because it seems like it snuck up on me. It's just yeah. you get caught up in life in living and doing all the things you do, uh, you know, having children and going into the workforce. And my workforce was as a secondary school counselor. So there was a lot of sitting. <laughs> and so gaining the weight. Um, over time, you know, I began to notice it. But how I began to notice it was how I felt. It wasn't a visual. People think because, you know, you see yourself in the mirror every morning you wake up, you're doing your hygiene or whatnot, or you're always checking yourself out before you walk out the door, but you're not paying attention to your weight. 
you're paying attention to your hair, your makeup, you're paying attention to the clothes you have on, you know, you know what you're wearing, whether or not you're going out to the door, out the door for work and whatnot. Um, so when I finally realized it, it was not feeling heavier, but my knee started hurting. Mm. I noticed I was leaning backwards when I walked and I didn't notice it right away. It's just the heavier it got, the more I guess it gradually began to happen. I was becoming out of breath going up the stairs and it's something that didn't magically click <laughs> right away. It's just over time, I guess, after doing it for so long um, that I started realizing it. And, you know, when dad went out to a state beach, walking, whatnot, relaxing, and I had to go back up all those stairs, up the cliff to get to the car. And that's when I got really winded mm -hmm. and I had to stop. <laughs> and that's what caught my attention right then and there about having to lose the weight and eat, eat better. And when, you know, and I went back to work and the same thing happened going up the stairs at the school site and then also, you know, getting winded, the knees hurting, leaning backwards. And I just said to myself, why am I walking and leaning backwards like I'm pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Memories of carrying a child started. <laughs> I'm like, this, no, I don't like this. <laughs> and one day, how I started working out is so hilarious. At least now it is to me. It's like, I wasn't thinking about it. I think it just was subconscious. I was just sitting down watching TV. Wasn't thinking about working out, not thinking about anything like, oh, I need to eat healthy. I was watching TV and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I just got up off the couch, grabbed the jump rope that I had, went into the backyard and started jumping rope. Wow. Seriously. And so this day I was like, what? <laughs> and I wasn't watching anything about working out on, you know, on TV. It was just, you know, staring at the dummy box on a Saturday. <laughs> so from there, I got up and doing that. The next phase after that, um, this high school I was working back uh, many moons ago, they started doing a rendition of The Biggest Loser. Mm. So I was on a school site where there were four different schools. You know, they had their own things like public safety, school of the arts, that type of thing. And I was at the ninth grade center for social justice. So each of the schools started competing against each other. So it was a group effort. And so that's really what got me on the ball watching with what I was eating and whatnot. And then also one day I went to the doctor and the doctor actually told me I was fat without saying I was fat. And she <laughs> did such a way that I didn't realize it till after I returned to work after the doctor. <laughs> I went all the way back to work and said, did she call me fat? <laughs> so little things like that is what got me on my journey. Then when we started the biggest loser thing, I started going back to the gym, first walking on a treadmill, then entered into going into the fitness classes. I was just walking on the treadmill one day. I was like, oh, what is that noise? And looking over into the group X uh room at um i was about to date myself it is now 24 hour fitness i was a member when they were family fitness <laughs> <laughs> so whoa so when it started going to the classes that's when i discovered uh turbo kickboxing and started doing that class started doing the weights here and there and then about three days a week all of a sudden i was in those fitness classes i really enjoyed them to the point where my type a personality came out and i had to be in the front row <laughs> so, but yeah, that's where I started just, and from there, I started going to the gym three days a week. Then I picked up the five days a week. I After that, six to one day a week of rest. Um, and eventually, I fell back into running. I was a track and field person, high school and college. And later on, adulthood, I started doing distance running. Until this day, I think I got tricked into that. But I enjoy it <laughs> because 15 years later, I am still running. <laughs> and so that's that. where, how my journey went. You know, um, something that I really want to highlight that you said that I think so many people watching can relate to is this idea of not noticing that, you know, we put on this weight. I've been there and you know, if it, if it showed up overnight, of course I would notice, but it's gradual. You don't see it. It's just easy to ignore. You don't, it's not like you want to see it. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you don't want to admit, <laughs> you know, it's all of a sudden it's, it's there. It, it, you can't ignore it for whatever reason. And I was actually talking to my husband about this the other day. 
yesterday, I think it was. And I was telling him about how when I was little, my mom and my stepdad used to make fun of fat people. That's what they would do. And my mom pointed at some lady and commented about how fat she was. And my stepdad looked at her and he goes, that's how big you are. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so my mom was like, no, I'm not. And I remember because I was in the back seat and she turns to me and she goes, am I as big as that lady? And I looked at the other lady and I said, yeah, mom, you are. <laughs> because she asked me and I'll never forget her crying because she didn't see it. She had no idea. And I mean, that scarred me for life, but that's another story. <laughs> but I love that you share that because there's a lot of people out there that get shamed for mm -hmm. not noticing it's, but you don't, it doesn't happen, you know, magically. It takes time to get bigger. <laughs> it really yes. does. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Um, something else that uh, I, I was curious too about is this idea of the doctor telling you that you're fat without telling you're fat, telling you that is, um, I really like that you share that too, because I think a lot of us don't even notice when we're being told things we need to hear. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of you for noticing, even if it, I mean, it only took you, but maybe half an hour. I mean, that's not that bad. I just want to get 30, 45 minutes back to work. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm curious too, because you were talking about all these different forms of exercise, but what are your thoughts between, you know, like physical movement versus working out? And is there a difference in your opinion? Um, yes, there is. The difference is when you're working out, it's intentional. You already in the mindset, I'm going to go out and go for a walk or I'm going to go running. Or you're thinking about, I'm going to go to the gym and lift weights, or I'm going to do this group fitness class, or I'm going to go to Pilates today or yoga. That's intentional. It's planned. You're going to do it. You follow through with it. You do do it. The other type of movement is unintentional physical things we do every day that we take for granted that we don't realize what we're doing like getting in and out of a car walking up and down the stairs walking from the parking lot into the store maybe doing some gardening those type of things we don't think about because those are part of our daily lives and our daily routine so we don't think of possibly being able to lose that type of movement that type of movement is where our functional fitness comes in Mm -hmm. um, where we said we need that functional training, like doing the, the squats and the stationary lunges, things like that, because that is what those exercises are building those muscles for everyday movement. And mm -hmm. we don't think of those as exercise, even though they do burn calories. Like when I go out and had to pull all them ridiculous weeds out of my yard, because <laughs> again, out of sight, out of mind, even though I'm pulling in and out the garage every day. <laughs> um, yeah, that was some hard labor. <laughs> so you know, you're burning calories, you're physically moving, you're working the muscles, but those are also the same movements that causes pain. And they cause us pain, one, because we're not working out, two, we're probably stooping, bending, and squatting incorrectly because the only time ever we do that correctly in our life outside of learning it from a trainer in the gym or watching a video is when we're toddlers. Yeah. <laughs> the toddler's quiet, I'm like, that's it. <laughs> the bodies just naturally drop, you know, straight down. So that would be the difference um, between the two. That's why I say there's a difference. So you have your intentional movement, like I said, going to the gym, going running, walking, hiking, swimming, cycling, all those things, playing a sport to your unintentional things where we're not thinking about it, walking up and down the stairs in and out the house, gardening, those type of things. You know, it's funny because I have a friend of mine who uh, he, he was a personal trainer for I don't even know how long, owned multiple gyms, all this. So he's he's got a lot of opinions about movement and he's like, oh, that's just lifestyle movement. And <laughs> and I like that term lifestyle movement. I think it's kind of nice to put it that way. It sounds catchy. But what I've noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed this too, is there's so many people out there that think, I go to the gym, therefore I can sit on the couch as long as I want and be a couch potato, not move ever, mm -hmm. not have that lifestyle movement or the unintentional you know, movement. What are your thoughts about that? Because to me, it's, it's like you can't outwork you know, a bad diet. 
Exactly. <laughs> things, but I'd love for you to share what your thoughts are. Well, first I would say good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh what do I call I have a wry sense of humor. So <laughs> like it's that's what makes you feel good. Um, the whole thing about that is not true. You can go and work out five, six days a week, mm -hmm. but you still can't go and just eat whatever you want to. Because the what people don't understand, the physical movement is really on about only about 10 to 12 percent of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The rest of it is how you eat. So, for example, people might think, oh, I ate a half a pizza. I should not have done it. Oh, well, I'll be in the gym, you know, tomorrow and the day after. Well, guess what? You have not burned off that half a pizza in those two days you worked out. <laughs> it's going to take you almost an entire month to burn. That half a pizza, you have exceeded your amount of calories more than likely than you were supposed to consume for the day because it's supposed to be calories in, calories out. You're burning more calories than you put in in order for the weight to drop. If that is your focus weight loss, because everybody's fitness goals and nutrition goals are different. Mm -hmm. But if your focus is weight loss and you go, like you said, and sit on the couch and just watch TV. And when you do that, usually there's eating involved because we are conditioned to eat during uh, movies or get up and grab something during a commercial. Mm -hmm. and and then if you spend more time doing that than the days you go to the gym, you're really not doing yourself any favors. You are actually sabotaging all the hard work that you are putting in in order to try to lose that weight. And a lot of people think they go to the gym and lift weights. Oh, I'm going to build all this muscle. But then they go, but why is the fat there? Because you're not doing what you should be doing to build lean muscle, which requires a different type of eating than someone who just wants to lose weight. So yeah. that's why I also became a nutrition coach so I can teach people. These things. <laughs> I love that you do that too, because for me, you know, I've been a personal trainer and a nutrition coach. And, you know, I, I think movement is extremely important. Don't get me wrong. I, that is definitely, but if you don't have your food right, <laughs> Your movement, even at the gym, isn't going to be as effective. It just isn't. You don't put diesel in an unleaded engine. You just right. don't do that. You can't expect it to run right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that. I like this idea of eating properly. And it's different for everybody, isn't it? I mean, there's some yeah. certain basic truths, but everybody is slightly different um, as to what their goals are and what works best for them. So what is your... The biggest myth that you fight against that people think is true when it comes to wellness? Oh, the biggest one. I mean, there's a few things. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Um, I think one of the biggest ones, it, it really does go back to the eating. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, here, here's what's been over the last couple of years. It just came to me right now. When people say, oh, I want to learn how to eat a plant-based diet. <laughs> but they do not know the, like they say, oh, I'm going to try to be a vegetarian or I'm going to practice veganism. Well, guess what? They don't even know the difference between being a vegetarian and being a vegan or that there even is a difference. <laughs> so I hear people, oh, I'm a vegetarian, but, um, I, you know, but they're still eating meat in their diet. Well, you're not a vegetarian. Yeah, the experience is they don't eat meat at all, <laughs> and yes. you know. So and then people ask me what the difference is. I said, well, if you're a true vegan, you darn sure are not going to be eating any meat. I don't care if it has four legs, swims, flies, <laughs> whatever the case may be. And people don't didn't know that true vegans they don't eat honey mm -hmm. at all. And that's because a lot of them believe that by eating the honey you're basically disrupting nature. Yeah. You're disrupting the whole process of what the bee's job is with pollination, collecting the honey, taking it to the hive, those type of things, and decreasing the bee population, basically. So they won't eat the honey. So that part has nothing to do with what they're putting in their body. It's just their belief with that process. 
Yeah. Um, also, yeah, they're not going to be eating any dairy. So no eggs, no yogurt. They're pretty much making their own food uh, at home, you know, their own vegan burgers, things like that. Uh, with vegetarians, they might still be eating the dairy yogurt or eating eggs, but they're just not eating anything with four legs or swims. So that would that would be or the cheese. Like vegans aren't gonna eat anything with dairy animal at all. Byproducts. Yeah, animal byproducts are not <laughs> not oh, yeah. my dad so politely. I can't say this because we're on TV, but he says he doesn't eat anything that takes a crap. So <laughs> and he fills that in with a swear word. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's the way he so politely puts it <laughs> when people ask him. So I, I like that. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny how people say they want something and they have done zero research whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. And then I laugh because people don't know I'm a vegetarian. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear those say things. I'm like, okay. Or they think being a vegetarian, I mean, and I've been told I know how to eat vegetables. I'm like, well, being vegetarian is more than knowing what a vegetable is or how to cook them and put them in your mouth. Or people, you know, well, what do you eat? What do you mean, what do I eat? I eat food, just take the meat off the plate. <laughs> so when I get invited places in my head, I'm going, please have something more than a salad, a garden salad, because they think I'm just gonna grab a fruit tray and I'll grab the salad and then everybody who doesn't want to eat meat is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know, just because they don't know what they're trying to be accommodating. Yeah. You know, type of thing. And then you have pescatarian and all these other things. And for me, me personally, I'm thinking, oh my God, where did all these subcategories come from? You either eat meat or you don't. <laughs> so I have to practice for myself being more understanding that we tend to do this in society to make excuses mm -hmm. for people to eat in a way that makes them feel good about themselves. I'm like, well, just continue to eat meat if you want to eat meat. <laughs> but yeah. just uh, you know, just have more vegetables and more fruit and more grains, those type of things, if you just want to slowly weed it out, but that doesn't make you a vegetarian. So we just have too many different subcategories that I think are just too confusing for some people. And they watch what other people do mm -hmm. and listen to people who really don't know because they went and Googled it. Exactly. <laughs> Dr. <And> Google. <laughs> internet is true. Yeah. <laughs> Or even that idea, my friend did it, so this will work for me. Yeah, it doesn't usually go that well. But uh, we do need to go to a commercial break. So mm -hmm. when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about food journaling and what that looks like and why it's important, things that you can do to be successful at it. We'll be back in just a minute.
Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us now, I am Julianne Meyer. You are watching Own Your Wellness, and today's amazing guest is Teresa Wells. Let's bring her back. Welcome back to the show. So excited to have you here today. Um, you know, we've been talking about this idea of wellness and all these different labels and these different ways to like call ourselves vegetarians, uh, pescatarians. It makes me think too of anything else, even sexuality these days or in the uh in the addiction world there's like california sober i mean we do this everywhere is what i'm getting at it's kind of interesting to me but uh before the commercial break i mentioned that we were going to talk a bit about this idea of um you know food journaling and i have my own thoughts and opinions and they're pretty strong because i come from having an disordered eating background. Uh, but something that you've done and created that really caught my attention, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. I would love for you to talk to us a little bit about that, about if you bite it, you write it, <laughs> and how that came about and why it's important. Well, um, back in my journey, when you had asked me when you know we, we first started this dialogue, is about where I began. Part of what I, I didn't mention is that I started writing down what I was eating and I started just by doing it on a calendar, not meal planning, not meal prepping, but simply writing down in the little squares on the calendar what I ate in the time of day I ate it. And I think I had saw that um, online or something. I was looking at different ways to try to fix my eating, if you will, and realize that a lot of my weight gain was because I was not eating. People think weight gain is just from overeating or indulging in a lot of bad carbs, the cakes, cookies, and all the other sweets, chips, and things like that. Well, you can actually gain weight from not eating. Mm -hmm. So because your body holds on to the fat because you put it in crisis. So when I started learning all this, I was writing things down. And when I wrote it down, I saw that I was eating no more than maybe once or twice in a day. Oh, wow. That when I did eat, it was still healthy. I was, so I was, even though there were sweets and things when you go to grandma's house when we were growing up, I never was a big sweet eater, probably because I was around it all the time and um, as a Gen Xer, you're still around that silent generation where they were home baking when the grandkids came over and stuff. So my grandma had already done this. So it wasn't a big thing. And plus growing up, we were made to go outside and we don't want to see you to the porch light comes on. <laughs> but we were more physically active and still being outside all day and going without eating. So I think just from growing up that way, that I developed a habit of not eating enough times in the day as I should. So that caused the weight gain in addition to the lack of physical activity after I left out of college because I was doing track in, in, in field. Um, but with my journal, I wanted to do bringing us up to speed. Now I wanted to do jet that I wanted something to go with my online course that I have. Um, my build a better you fitness and nutrition program. I said there needs to be, and this comes from being an educator. So I have to preface it with that. Being an educator for over 20 years, I go, oh, I can write a course now. I was never a teacher. I've been a secondary school counselor. So my whole niche for that entire time was behavioral and mental health. Mm -hmm. Everything, of course, but diagnose. So, cause parents confuse me with a licensed clinical social worker or psychiatrist, I have to explain, I don't diagnose, I don't treat, I don't, I don't prescribe, but what I can do is observe, assess, refer. Basically, I do everything they can except for the three things I just mentioned. So with having that background, in addition to becoming a personal trainer, nutrition coach, I confuse those two skill sets of mine together and created the journal, If You Bite It, You Write It, a mindful food and fitness journal. I wanted people to sit down and write. I didn't want them just to write, today I had a hamburger, a side of fries, and a Coke. Oh, maybe I should not have done it. Oh, well, and then do it again tomorrow. <laughs> so I wanted something that was intentional and mindful. 
I wanted people to sit and really write down, okay, what time of day did I eat my breakfast? Mm -hmm. What did I eat for breakfast? Was I eating alone or by myself? How was I feeling before, during, and after I ate? What was I thinking before, during, and after I ate? You know, I also created so people can write down the things that they did well in the day and a section for things where they knew they could make improvements. Mm -hmm. I also wanted them to still feel good about their journey. So I made a page for them to write down their affirmations and put a little positive quote at the end of that affirmation sections like writing your affirmations and just processing really internalizing what happened so when they write in the journal if you buy it you write it and actually i should call it a textbook because they ended up being textbook size to be honest with you (laughs) i'm just laying it out there it's not a journal that you can carry around and put in your your bag your gym bag your purse anything like that it makes i wanted people to actually have to sit down and process Mm -hmm. their journey of what they're going through and i actually wrote it in a way so people can identify whether or not they may possibly have disordered eating Mm -hmm. wow i really think i need to talk to my doctor yeah Yeah. so that's something that i really want to share because anybody who's watched my show anytime i've always had this thing about like "Ah, i I, i've never written down my food like i i understand the importance of it and i'll take pictures of it that was my workaround (laughs) but for me what you've created is so much more comprehensive and important because for someone like myself or somebody who has an eating disorder to be present with food and understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, what's going on, not just shoveling it in my face, you know, like befriending this process (laughs) that I can't ever get away from for the rest of my life. I love that you created that because that's something that would have helped me especially back when I had those issues and they were very prevalent in my life. So I just want to say thank you (laughs) because, and I like the idea of it being textbook size because then you have to sit down, be present. You can't just buzz through. (laughs) No, it is not a buzz through at all. And every, and it doesn't matter if you eat breakfast or not, you're not really a big breakfast person. It's about getting you to at least put something in your body. I don't care if it's a, if you're trending and it's a slice of avocado toast with chickpeas and your cup of tea or coffee in the morning, it puts something in your body. Mm-hmm. Um, so every meal, it's like that for breakfast. I have breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, and there's also a page for exercise. So you can write down on the exercise page what your workout was for the day, how long mm-hmm. you did it, the workout, what your water intake is, because I'm big on drinking water. As people do, they drink water. And what they will say to me is, uh, or one of my clients I have now, she said to me, yeah, I drink water, plain water, because I know her, I was like, plain water. No, she thought drinking water was diluting her orange juice. <laughs> but, but no, plain H2O, earth juice. Just <laughs> water. You I like that, juice earth juice. <laughs> yeah. You should I come think. up with your own water line and name it earth juice. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why I really did it. I wanted people to really, I want them to face what people don't want to face. Yeah. And that is dealing with their demons. Mm -hmm. I want people to be able to identify in, I don't care if it's with, you know, my book, if you buy it, you write it or one of my programs. I really want people to be able to identify their truths, their triggers, their roadblocks, their fears, because until you are willing to face what is really mentally and emotionally breaking you down until you become brave enough to do that, you're really not going to be able to move forward with the fitness piece because these are things going on with us mentally and emotionally that are prohibiting us from moving forward with that physical fitness journey. Some, you know, myself personally as a long time, uh, Person, you know, just suffering from depression. Mm-hmm. It interferes with me going out and training for my races sometimes. I still go, but I notice when it takes starts to take over, 
I have trouble getting out the door. I make this a long procrastinated journey and I have to mentally coach myself to move, but not everybody can do that. They're not in that space to do that. So there, that's why I said I started tying in my background in behavioral and mental health with the fitness and nutrition mm-hmm. coaching. And that's why I did this journal because until you identify what's really going on with you, you're not going to be able to move forward. I remember when I used to eat, another reason I did this, I could have lunch right now. And then somebody called me an hour later and say, let's go out to lunch and have a drink. And I go, well, I just ate an hour ago. I'm not hungry. And it's kind of come anyway. And I think I'll go and I'll just get an iced tea. But what do we actually do when we get there? We actually eat because we're conditioned to eat at a table because someone else is eating. So now I have eaten more than I needed to within, you know, a two hour time span. And I'm too full to go to eat dinner, you know, eat dinner at home later in the day. Now I don't get did not get what I needed in my body because I had too much of one thing and not enough of, um, of another. That's a really good point. And I've been doing a juice cleanse uh, I don't know, for the past, I think it's 12 days now, something like that. And I, you know, I was on vacation and <laughs> I'm sitting there across from my husband and he's eating food and I'm like <laughs> sipping on juice. It was the weirdest. <laughs> I felt so left out. <laughs> it's real. I felt left out. That's really what it was oh, not right. fun about it. But, um, yeah, ultimately Think in big picture. What's going to be best for you? (laughs) That's the thing. We have to do what is best for us and our bodies and not what everybody else is doing. And that's why I tell people, I don't design cookie cutter programs. I will not tell, yes, I will be your personal trainer and give you something cookie cutter just because I want to be lazy and not create something. Everything I create is based on the individual, period. So it's like... You have me, you, you have me there to help you, to support you on your journey. That's exactly what I'm going to do because I just absolutely love what it is that I do. I love people seeing smile and recognizing the power they have within themselves. I love seeing them, you know, just notice, you know, that they're beautiful inside out from the time they started throughout their journey to the time they actually learn not to need me no more. Yeah. And people, and I tell people, I don't do this for the money. If I did it for the money, I would never make any money. <laughs> I do this because I love helping people. I have a passion about it. And my passion is so great because a lot of these things I have went through myself and had to do it alone. And I don't want people to have to do things alone when they don't have to do it alone. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's really important too. And I like this idea of, creating the power within the person so that they can, they don't need you, but they can want to work with you still, which is okay. <laughs> but, you know, there's that accountability that's always nice. That That's really where it is for me is in the accountability. I mean, I've been a personal trainer for, I don't even know how long. I still work with a trainer because it's not that I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't want to think about the workout and... Yes. You know, the accountability of having to show up for somebody else makes me do it when I don't feel like it. So (laughs) it's but I like knowing that I can do it on my own if I need to. Like if they're out of town, I could still work out. (laughs) That's what I tell people. I I was in a really bad car accident years ago that uh, took me out of, you know, the marathon running world for a while and every time the doctor said okay try this try this i would have relapses and it would knock me back but after the accident now i'm a runner (laughs) what is that thing now i'm a runner of course i've known like weight training stretching and everything else i'm supposed to do i just want to run right (laughs) uh before the accident i wasn't going into the gym for weight training i was going to the gym i was doing it more for uh cross training anything that's not running going to the uh, group fitness classes i would lift weights but not at the level I need it to. Um, But now I do make sure I do that, whether it's body weight training, bands, dumbbells, whatever. So after the accident, I actually started working with a personal trainer. 
Okay. First, I allow my son to train me <laughs> about going in to the field of personal training. And then I just started going to the gym that he was doing his training out at. And I like going there better than the big commercialized places because it was a small box gym. And I love it because no one in there was taking up equipment, trying to do selfies instead of working out. <laughs> and when you got in there, there were athletes, there was a mix of people, your everyday running mill people that just want to be healthy and professional athletes. And that made me feel better about going in and there because I was more focused. I was more centered and I started doing the weight training that was specific for runners. And I got so strong and so much more powerful by doing that. And I started healing the way I should um, after the car accident. So it really helped me uh, be able to move forward and get back, eventually get back to running like I'm doing now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So when we come back, because we got to go to one more commercial break, mm -hmm. I actually have a question I want you to think about during the break. And that is, have you noticed that when you set a physical goal that matches a business goal that you end up getting to both goals quicker, easier and faster? We're going to talk about that when we come back in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us now, I'm Julianne Meyer. You are watching Own Your Wellness. Today's amazing guest is Teresa Wells. Let's bring her back. Welcome back. So glad to have you here. Uh, you know, I asked this question before we went to commercial break, and that was, for those that are just tuning in, <laughs> have you noticed that if you set a physical goal that matches, say, a business goal, that you can reach both of them quicker and easier? Uh-oh, we got it frozen. Hold on one second, people. Hold on, hold on. All right, we got her back. Yay, small technical difficulties. <laughs> In the land of people watching, no time has passed. So, Teresa, <laughs> I would love for you to answer the question, please. Okay, uh, yes. Um reach you know when you have something physical going on with me specifically physical fitness and health and nutrition it did help me move along faster with what i do for my business um and some people ask how did you go from education to making this jump over to fitness nutrition you know the health whole health and wellness thing 
And I said, well, it's something I've always been tied into as far as the fitness, even though, you know, we had our lives bumps, you know, the roller coaster ride that we go through with the weight loss, weight gain and what have you. It was more so, well, I did track and field in high school, <laughs> track and field in college. I stopped doing that. And then I went and shifted eventually, like I shared, going back into the gym and just going that. I eventually ended up becoming a turbo kickboxing instructor, becoming a Zumba instructor. Then I became a strong nation instructor, which is more their hit stuff right now, um, which they went they changed the name a thousand times, Strong Nation, Strong by Zumba, but it's the same thing, but just more of the hit type stuff. So just doing all that and then being an outdoorsy person, I've always been a really outdoorsy person with the hiking and things. So just tying all that in into what I did with education and filtering it off to running my own business full time now, it was, it meshed well. It was a good Mary. Um, and especially when I noticed that some doctors over the few years have started prescribing exercise <laughs> and nutrition to patients who have depression or that, you know, like my doctor told me I was fat without telling me <laughs> I was fat. Tell him, you know, maybe you should try this. And, you know, and going in there and knowing with my background in the mental and behavioral health world, I know exercising and how you eat ties into your hormones that create the happiness and the joy and the energy you know that serotonin and dopamine and all those things that those hormones that we have in our body that are feel-good hormones exactly. and so all that plays a big role and that just propelled me forward into doing what it is that i do now and it's not easy because if it was everybody would do it i still have to maintain my self-care and my physical and mental health in order to help other people. And that's how I ended up drifting off into the self-care world as well, because I was like, I'm burnt out. And when I burnt out, I noticed I wasn't focused. I wasn't energized enough. My uh, physical fitness, as far as when it came to my marathon training, especially also being a distance running coach on top of everything else, I was falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me realize, okay, I have to take better care of myself in order to help other people. Because when you burnt out, you're not only no good to you, you can't expect to be there for someone else in any capacity because you don't have enough for you. You're not pouring back into yourself. You're, you're giving, 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 giving until you are completely empty. So just going through personal life situations, um, career fields, and then what it is I love doing that started making me feel better because running is my therapy. It was just so much more better for me. Yeah. Actually going to the doctor. And it's funny because I'm going, they tell you as a school counselor, clinical social worker, things you should be going to therapy too because you get transference from taking on everyone else's stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> I go for my own, you know, issues. And because if you don't, it starts spilling over into your work. It starts spilling over into your personal life. So you need to go and get some help to heal. And me being a big believer in that, I would go do that. But it was funny to me at the same time because I said, I'm listening that somebody talk to me like I talk to people's kids at school. <laughs> like, how does that make you feel? And I'm like, can you be more genuine for me right now? You know what I do? <laughs> so just having a fight with that as well. And then. Like I said, it makes you move faster. I just got a fire lit under my butt saying, this is what I want to do full time. This is how I want to live. I want to be have a lot less stress. Let's get rid of the bad stress. <laughs> There's good stress, but let's get rid of as much of the bad stress as we could possibly get rid of. <laughs> um, and you do that by one, as I tell people this, you're not a tree. You don't have roots. If you don't like where you are, move. <laughs> I to continually tell myself that to leave a job I was no longer happy at doing. And it wasn't the kids. It was all the other stuff that the principals and administrators are doing, the district is doing, that people are doing. And then after COVID being forced, what people don't know, the school district I was in, they forced us to go back. We should not have went back when we did. And nobody was prepared. And they didn't put anything in place for people's mental health, not for the teachers, the students, the parents, administrators, Nobody. So it was a big cluster, you know what? <laughs> we return 
And as a school counselor, when I do, I noticed that the staff was suffering. They were hurting emotionally. They didn't feel safe. They weren't comfortable. Just the COVID stuff, not anything yes. or anything like that. Um, and people were still catching COVID and coming to work, not knowing they had it, obviously. And we were yes. getting tested every week. And then it was just, it was awful. So going through that, not only that, I moved from living in San Diego up to the Inland Empire, which is 90 minutes away with traffic that can be anywhere from two to four hours to get home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my physical health, my mental health, my emotional well-being, not to mention my car was probably going through the same symptoms <laughs> with all the driving. It, it, it was just too much. And so I had to do what was going to make me heal, make me return to my true self. Mm -hmm. And just with all that, that made me move faster with my business because I resigned and I threw my hands up and said, forget this. <laughs> just, yeah. just mean people post this photo ah, yeah. and that's what that's what I did I think that that's an important distinction too you don't have roots you can move <laughs> I think a lot of us get stuck in the familiarity of the hell that we've created for ourselves mm -hmm. and feel like we have to stay there because that's what we know and the unknown is a little scary it's like I you know I worked in addiction recovery for I don't know, was it like six years? Man, that was like a lifetime. I think I'd like pay back some karma <laughs> during my lifetime. Yes. For, I, mean, <laughs> woo, I would wish that on a lot of people because it's extreme. That's a, those, you know, those people, I was those people deserve therapists too because <laughs> of all the trauma and drama that you hear, you know, the people talking about, my gosh, it's just, it's scary. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm really glad that you shared that with us. Uh, we are almost out of time. We only have about two minutes or so left. So I'm curious if there's anything that you'd like to share that maybe you haven't yet. Um, yeah, I have one of my other books that was just released in December. Um, it was it's the Holiday Survival Guide, uh, A Healthier Way to Stay Fit During End of the Year Chaos. Yes, that right there. That right there. I will say that's my baby. That's the first one that I did all on my own with no help, no VA, no nothing. <laughs> so oh, wow. I love it. And it's been helping a lot of people. Um, it, like it came out, it published Christmas morning on Amazon. And I've actually been using it in my one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, my students and clients that I work with as far as self-care. It's really teaching people how to identify their roadblocks, their triggers, their interferences that keep them from becoming mentally, emotionally healthy. It's teaching them how to have less stress, decrease their anxiety, get rid of the overwhelm and frustration. It's teaching them that no is a complete sentence mm -hmm. and it's okay to set boundaries. And if people around you don't like the boundaries that you set, we it really teaches you how to maneuver around that and for you not to feel guilty about doing things that bring you peace in your life so oh that's, that's amazing i i think that that is something that you can use basically any time of year <laughs> i mean the holidays are over and people are like have are buying are still buying it because i point out like you just did you can use this any time of the, the year it's just that when i did i said okay I know what's about to happen. Christmas time is when in holidays are the time when people become their most depressed. They got family coming in. You're looking at them like, at them like get out. <laughs> Put a smile on. And you're stressed. You got holiday events with kids, yourself, and work. And ex everything just feels more intense. So that's why I wanted to do it around the holidays and gave it the title that I gave it. But yes, you can use it at any point in time of life of your life throughout any point in time during the year. I like that um, because, yeah, and I like that it's geared towards holiday anyway, because that is really, <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to be a fun time of year, but oh my goodness, there's so much more to it, especially as an adult. <laughs> but um, Teresa, I just, oh, before we go, I want to say too that both of those are available on Amazon. Um, so make sure that you go and support Teresa and yourself more importantly, because <laughs> you deserve wellness. You deserve to walk through life, not on your own and also 
as healthy as possible. Um, but anyway, that is all the time that we have for today. So I just want to say thank you so much, Teresa, for being here. It has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you a little bit better. <laughs> and, um, and for those of you who are watching, we will, we will be back again next Thursday. So enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you again soon.